All right, looking at the titration of a weak acid or a determination of pKa of a weak acid lab, this could be a formal or a simple lab report, and you will know that as a function of what you've been assigned in your class. So with this in mind, we know that what we've done is fairly straightforward. First of all, our possible acids here are potassium hydrogen phthalate, ascorbic acid, maleic acid, and there could be one more. And if there is, um, your instructor will let you know on that one. So these are your possible unknowns. Our job for this experiment is to one, get the pKa, or it may be pKa's, pKa1 and pKa2 of our weak acid. You're gonna get the molar mass of your weak acid, and you're going to use that data to calculate the initial pH and compare it to the measured pH. With this in mind, we have to make sure we've recorded our data correctly, and we're going to have to graph this. So you are going to have weighed out the, the amount as indicated on the bottle. Make sure you record that. Make sure you have recorded the molarity of your sodium hydroxide, and we're just going to titrate. And you've collected all of this data. So with this, what are we going to do? Well, you have your letter or your number of your unknown. You have the mass that you weighed out and the concentration of your particular bottle of sodium hydroxide. When you graph this, you're gonna have some rules here. One, make sure you have the maximum amount of grid lines because you're gonna to have to read off of this graph. You're gonna put the pH on the y-axis. You're gonna put the volume of your NaOH added on your x-axis and you're gonna have your grid lines. And it's going to do one of two things. It's either gonna come up a little bit, level out, bump up, and then level out. Or if you have a diprotic acid, it's gonna bump up again and level out again. If you have the diprotic and you have the two little humps on this one, you're gonna have two pKa's. So let's make sure we remember what we're doing here. If we have a buffer, we know that our equation for a buffer is pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. We know that if we are looking at a titration here where we're adding a strong to a weak, what we're going to have on our strong to a weak is we're going to have a couple of relevant things. One, we're going to have, we're going to ignore this little jump at the beginning that's just getting and starting to generate our buffer. What we're looking at is where our pH changes dramatically. Where we're looking at our pH changing dramatically, if we look at where it is flat at the bottom and flat at the top. And then we go here halfway up between those two level points, we are going to get the equivalence point. The equivalence point by definition is the point where the moles of the acid is equal to the moles of the base added. Remember you are adding in here a strong base as you titrate, and that is going to be really useful because if those two are equal, then this is gonna tell us that if we know how many grams of acid we have, and we know how many moles of acid we have, that the grams over the moles of our acid is going to give us our molar mass. So we're gonna get our, molar, our moles of our acid from the moles of the base added, and we are going to get that from the equivalence point. The equivalence point is probably not going to be a data point, and you are gonna to have to add this by hand, where you're gonna to have to compare where it's flattened at the top, where it's flattened in the buffering region, and halfway in between those two is your equivalence point. All right, with this, and obviously, if you read down from your equivalence point, you're gonna get the volume of base added. Remember that the volume in liters of your base added multiplied by the molarity of your base, which you recorded, is going to be the moles of the base. All right, so we've got our moles of our base, we've got our grams of our base, and we've got our molar mass of our base. The second thing that we have to get off of this graph, again, we've got to have nice grid lines in order to do this, is that if we have our equivalence point here, 
halfway to the equivalence point by definition, halfway to the equivalence point, our pH of our solution is going to equal pKa of our weak acid. So at this point, you have a pKa of your weak acid, reading it off your graph, you have your molar mass of your acid, and you are going to use those two things, both the pKa and the molar mass to identify which acid you have. Now, the last step you're going to do this is you're going to calculate the initial pH. This is going to require an ice chart. This is going to require that you remember that you dissolved your acid in 100 mils of deionized water, and you're going to have to take the pKa you used, get your Ka for that, and then calculate the pH of this acid. With this in mind, make certain when you are done that you turn in a nice clean graph. With the note, if you have a diprotic and it looks like this, you're going to have two equivalence points. I'm just going to call them EQPT2, EQPT1. And you are also going to have, if you have a diprotic acid, you are going to have two pKa's, where this is pKa1 and halfway there is pKa2. Those will be more even if we've got it drawn a little better, but it'll do for now. All right, so make sure you attach your graph and you answer these questions if you are doing this as a standard lab report. If it is a formal lab report, then you're gonna have a different set of instructions as you go through. Make sure you explain at the end um, by comparing your pKa's and your molar masses, which of the acids you have, your possible sources of error, um, and why you think it is that particular acid.